Hi, I'm Bill Stagg, Sweet Acre Apiaries. We're in the Shoe Swap, the southern interior region of British Columbia, Canada. And today we're going to install one of our very own four frame nukes. So it's a simple process. This is how we sell our four frame nukes, is in a box like this. And when you get it, bring it back home. You should have your area prepared and ready to go. Uh, when you get your nuke home, simply put it on top of the hive box or the brood box you're going to install your nuke into. And just open it up and let them orientate, let them fly. If you just bounce them in the trunk of your car, bringing them home, Go inside, have a cup of tea, relax, let the bees chill down. What you don't want to do is rustle them up, bring them home and rip them open. Okay, and you can leave them there for a day, two days, three days. If you pick them up late in the evening, let them orientate, let them fly here. And when you have a nice day, the weather's nice, go ahead for, and do your install. So <clears throat> one thing I've done here is I have some empty boxes and I am going to open up this box and shift the nuke over here. So one thing I always encourage people to do is plan your lift because what, what you don't want to do is pick up a heavy box whether it be of honey, whether it be full of bees and then not know what to do with it. Okay so it's always nice to have some empty old old uh, patinaed bee boxes handy um, because uh, they always come in useful. So what we've done here is we've lit in a smoker, we're ready to go. We're going to install the nuke. So we can drift a little bit of smoke in. You can see today it's actually cool and breezy, uh, so the bees aren't even flying right now, but I know they're in there. Sometimes less is more with smoke. You don't have to suffocate them. Your goal is not asphyxiation. So if you are going to leave this box on top of your hive for a few days, um, you're going to want to cover the top. There's ventilation screens in the top, which is great for transportation, but if it starts raining out, or if the weather's really miserable, uh, you don't want that weather pouring into the nuke. So by simply covering it and opening that up, you're good to go. You can wait until an opportune time. So there's going to be two Robertson screws holding the lid down so now that lid is ready to come off I'm going to pick up the nuke box and move it to the side I can go right over here and now this has already been prepped, ready for the nuke to go in. Now how we prep the box, was simply we have a frame feeder, because that's how we're going to feed syrup. And then we have foundation ready to go. So it's always nice when you're installing your nuke. Now this is a four frame nuke, but we sell four frame nukes with five frames, because what we do, is we put in a frame of foundation. Um, so it allows us in the field to make up the nuke and allows us, or allows the bees, time to grow. So this nuke is not even ready to go out into the customer's hands yet. So it's not a, not a big boiling thing, but you'll, you'll get uh, an idea of how to do this. So knowing that we're putting five frames in here, I wanna make sure there's ample room. Because what you don't want is to confine things so you're squishing that last frame in. The last frame that you put back into the nuke, the last couple frames even, you want to make sure they're foundation or drawn comb. You don't want to be pushing combs together and you'll see why in here in a second. So I've given them a drift of smoke. Entrance is over here. Now I can lift this lid off. And look at that, they're nice and quiet in there. It's kind of a cool breezy day. They don't seem too anxious to fly. Um, I should also say, I'm not wearing a veil for uh, presentation purposes. When you're a new beekeeper, 
Use your smoker, it's a tool. Have it lit, make sure it's lit, and wear a veil. Because you want your first beekeeping experience to be a pleasant one. Um, I've got lots of stories about getting stung in the face, and that's not something that you want to do. So there you go. There is my frame of foundation. That'll be the fifth frame. Uh, you want to be careful when you're pulling that first frame out of your nuke box. You don't want to fight it out. Um, and it's nice having that frame of foundation on the outside. Most times that'll come out quite easily. Um, if you try to pull a frame out, and if something starts to stick and it's jamming, please do not reef on it and pull it out. Because what you're doing, if you picture the comb on those frames, can start rubbing against each other. And it'll drag itself up the opposing comb, it'll roll bees, it'll kill bees, um, could potentially kill the queen, which uh, destroys the nuke. Um, and also, it makes the bees pretty, pretty uh, salty. That's what my daughter would say. It makes the bees salty. So we wanna be aware of that. So that one came out very easy. So now I've given myself room to manipulate the frames. So I don't have to keep them tight in there anymore. I've got the first one out. I can use the back side of my hive tool. I can pull them apart. I can use the sharp edge to go in between the lugs, in between the edges of the frame, and pry them apart. So here we go. So here is, there's bees on here, and that's a feed frame. So there's lots of actually fresh pollen in there. This is all stored honey. That's a nice heavy feed frame. So that's a good sign. There's bees on both sides. There we go. So another thing to keep in mind too, is the order of the frames, how you're taking them out of the nuke box. You want to mirror that in your brood box. Um, the bees have intentionally set up their house the way that they have, so you want to be respectful of that and do a nice, neat, tidy, clean job transferring it over. There's no advantage. You don't want to be breaking up the brood nest and, and put a, a frame of brood and a frame of honey and then a frame of brood and a frame of honey um, because then that separates that whole brood nest. Keep, keep the brood together. That's very, very important. So again, it can be nice and careful. And pull up the next frame. So now we got brood here. And I have open brood. Very young larva. And I see eggs. Now your first inspection, asking you to see eggs if you've never seen eggs before, it's a big ask. Because uh, it's a small little grain of rice, it's tricky, it's going to take a little bit of a, of a trained, a learned skill. But what you want to do is you want to see open brood. So if you notice here, on this frame, outside this capping, that's capped honey. As you move in, that's capped brood. Capped honey, capped brood. So if you look in around, that cat brood, what you want to see in the middle here on the outside is you want to see open brood. Now what that tells you if you see open brood is that queen is laid in there. Now if you remember from your beginner's beekeeping course you took, day one when the egg gets laid, the egg gets capped or hatches, the larva gets capped, day eight. So if you see open brood in your nuke, Within the last eight days, that queen has been laying. So, when you're doing your first install, if you see your queen, it's a reason to celebrate, but you don't need to be looking for the queen. All you need to do is look for stores. You want to see honey, you want to see a nice bee population, and you want to see open brood. If you can check those boxes, you can happily go ahead and install the nuke. What you don't want to see is if your nuke has no open brood, then you can ask some questions. You can take some pictures, send it to a, send it to a mentor, and figure out what's going on. It is possible that the queen got rolled when the nuke was being made up, or maybe in transportation, 
What you don't want to see is a whole bunch of queen cells everywhere. Now, another thing that I, I get from beginners often is they will see, oh, I have queen cups. So do me a favor, Google image, look at the difference between a queen cup and a queen cell. There's a big difference. Queen cups, totally normal. Colony always has queen cups in it. But what you don't want is you don't want eggs and larvae in those queen cups because then they become queen cells. And that means you could have a problem. You could be queenless. So again, here's another frame. You see how quiet the bees are? This is a breezy, cool day. They're not flying in this yard at all. But here we are, and they're nice and quiet and gentle. So if I threw these on the, on the back of my truck and drove down the road for 45 minutes and opened them up right away, they probably wouldn't be acting like this either. So remember what we mentioned about installing the nuke and you don't need to look for the queen. But it's always a bonus when you find her. And she's right there. So I don't know if you can see that on the, on the camera or not, but she's walking around. And that's a good sign. So you have a queen right nuke. And there's lots of eggs in here. This is a really nice frame of brood. A little bit of honey up in the corners. Can tap them on the shoulder. There's the queen there. Hey girl. Yeah, eggs open brood all the way around. Eggs open brood all the way around. And another good thing to, to be mindful of too, it's, it's a good uh, practice you can have, is when you're holding that frame, you can almost think about the binding of a book. Get the sun behind you, hold it up, and look down the cells. You can see all that brood, and all of a sudden those little small grains of rice start popping out. They're like, oh, that's what eggs look like. So if you want to transition that frame around and look at the other side of it, and I'll do it once like this. Here, I'll show you. Drop one side down, spin it around, and then lift it up. Get the sun behind me. Now I'm looking at the other side. See, and I can move it around a little bit in the light, and all of a sudden, ooh, there's eggs. Wonderful. Look at the other side. Flip it around. So that's a good, good practice to, to get. So there we go. So everything's looking really nice with this little nuke. We're almost done. So, oh, here's another good amount of feed on this, this hive, or this, you can see all that cap honey there. The inside, all covered with bees. And look at that, there's some open brood on here too. So two and a half frames of brood, not the biggest nuke out there, but it's still a little bit early, so this wouldn't even be in the customer's hands for a couple more weeks. We've just installed our four frame nuke, simple as that. So you might wonder, well, there's honey in there, should I feed it? Um, I always encourage people, look at the price you paid for that nuke. And if you want some cheap insurance, feed it. Uh, if you're using a frame feeder, um, try to make sure, there, there's different styles. You can get those little, it'll be a flat top with the little tubes running down so it kind of prevents the bees from drowning. What I do is I kind of get excited and, and, I, and I am pleased if the bees fill a full of comb at some point and then there, it gives them a lot of ladder to go up and down and they're not going to drown because open frame feeders like this there can be issues with bees drowning if you don't have all this burr comb or a solid plate on top you can get a few pieces of wood entrance blocks something like that put some kind of flotation device in there because bees are great at flying not so great at swimming and you can use feeder pails, feeder jars, canning jars, pickle jars, whatever. There's hive top feeders, there's boardman feeders. It's not what this video is about. So now that I have those four frames from the nuke, I can take the foundation and slowly move it, sandwich 
that nuke and then put in my outside frames. So that nuke gets installed right in the middle of that box. Now here I have two, four, six, eight frames plus a frame feeder. That's what I usually run in mine. Uh, but you can And for your first year, if you're dealing all with foundation, it's probably to your benefit to throw that last frame in. And everything is nice and tight together, and away you go. I want to put the inner cover in. I want to put the flat side down. There's different styles of inner covers out there. This one here has a feeder hole. I mentioned pickle jars, canning jars, buckets. That is where you would feed. Now if you're not using this feeder hole, I do advise you throw a chunk of asphalt shingle, here's a chunk of carpet, something on there to keep it covered. Or what will happen is the bees will come up here and invariably build a whole bunch of comb between the inside of the outer cover and the inner cover here. It makes a mess. So I can keep that covered. They are in. Fed them with, shirt, with syrup, cheap insurance. And that's a nice little Sweet Acre Apiaries nuke. These are the boxes we now use. I've been using these for a couple years now. There we go. And another thing too, is these queens are all produced by myself. Uh, we're in the shoe swap region. It's kind of this yard in particular is kind of where the North Okanagan meets the shoe swap, and uh, yeah, we raise all of our own stock. Uh, so these are true local Canadian mutts. That's what these queens are, and they perform well in the north. I'm very proud of them. So there you go.